I'm Cynthia James, and this network is about changing lives one woman at a time. Welcome to Women Awakening. I'm your host, Cynthia James, and I'm honored to be with you every week to introduce you to another incredible woman, a woman that's taking control of her life, a woman that is standing in her power. Actually, all of these women are change makers on multiple levels. And so they're examples of what's possible because we all live in a field of possibility. I'm extraordinarily grateful for my life and the choices that I've made to bring me to this point. And I want to give you portals of opportunity to step into your power because the world is waiting for you. So we are on iTunes, Spotify, our iHeart, Amazon, YouTube. Subscribe and come back every week and meet an extraordinary woman. So uh, my guest today is Jennifer Parker Brown. Nicknamed the Dream Warrior, Jenny Parker Brown is a visionary, divine brand catalyst, and quantum alignment strategist. She's the founder of the highly acclaimed House of Preeminence magazine, and she helps and showcases mission-driven change makers and positions them as sought-after super leaders. Her diverse careers, okay, I want you to listen to this, range from fashion retailing, performing arts, fitness instructor, equestrian cabaret artist, award-winning gastronomy chef, published author, media designer, image consultant, and visionary magazine editor. I mean, it sounds like she's done a whole lot in this lifetime, yeah? So her mission and passion are to raise the bar on transformation by bringing the qualities of beauty, grace, and heart to help humanity rise. What I really love is that her background is is backed up with neuroscience, quantum physics, and a passion for well-being and fulfillment, and a mission to reveal to as many people as she can reach the magic of basing their life on their genius and superpowers through sharing the incredible power of the Trinity Code, a groundbreaking quantum success model for the 21st century. Jenny, welcome. Thank you so much. When you, when, when you read out a bio, I'm always looking around going, where, where is this woman? I want to meet her. <laughs> yes. Well, I, I mean, are they talking about me? <laughs> absolutely. But you know what I think is so wonderful about this is like, every woman that I've interviewed, you, you know, there's been over 150 of them all have had all these different trajectories in their lives. And I think that's what makes it powerful is that is that we kept growing with the vision that lived within us. So I want to know, where did you come from? Where were you born? How did you grow up? Well, I was just thinking about this yesterday, Cynthia, how grateful I am. I don't know if you feel like this, to be a baby boomer, because we grew up in one of the... Uh, the safest times for children. This was a time before screens. Screens were um, screens were a luxury that we maybe had at the, at the, at the weekend for a, an old western. But nevertheless, you know, you know, I grew up in Devon in England. I'm in France now, and the overriding memories of my childhood was um, of safety, of of being able to fulfill myself as a child. So we were out. Every day, all the time, we got we were allowed to go out and we thought nothing of going walking two miles to the beach every single day in the summer holidays and going roller skating and 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 all these amazing things we could do on my seaside town. And um, we were always out. We couldn't we couldn't stay in. It was completely safe. Nobody was worried about where you were at that time or, you know, what time you should come in as long as you were kind of out having fun. So. It was such a blessed time um, and oh, just such a blessed time. And, I, and I, it is a beautiful place. Devon in England is, is, a, is a really beautiful place with more, moorlands and little quaint cottages with thatched roofs and all that, all that and cream teas and all that stuff. So my 
my actual childhood until I was 18 was was really, really beautiful. And my parents were um, estate agents, like real estate agents. So we moved quite often into really comfortable houses. So I really wanted for, wanted for nothing. Wow, that's that's so beautiful. It's really interesting. Well, I'm a baby boomer too. And, and you know, it's really interesting because what you're describing in terms of the, the neighborhoods and stuff, you know, people kept their doors open and people went out. But in my community, <clears throat> excuse me, there were a lot of things that were going behind closed doors that weren't so great. But but we went to school, we could do all kinds of different things. And so I think the baby boomers came because we were going to be change agents and transformational agents that for things to come. So I want to I want to just talk about uh, this career. I mean, you've had, you know, several careers in this lifetime. <laughs> Were you always curious? Were you always, uh, you know, someone who wanted to experience new things? It's a it's a great question. Um, it's and there's a, and there's a really important story in there. Is is the <laughs> was no? I had no idea what I, I had an idea what I wanted to do um, when I was eighteen, and that was either work with horses or do something artistic. That was the only thing I could think of. I couldn't think of anything else. And so all of this trajectory was was actually the way that life brought me to the great work that I that I'm doing now. And I've missed out a few careers in that. I missed, I missed out Chateau Restoration and a couple of others. Uh, uh, but so but but that's the way life, life was. So what I noticed, um, you know, I used to feel like some kind of dilettante or, you know, a, a, it, because because in our in our uh, educational period we were trained taught to be specialists like to specialize in something so that we could go on and get better and better and better in that thing of course I felt I felt like an outsider because I just I just kept swapping careers and most of them I did really well in so um the but but what was what was happening and this and it it really occurred to me in 2006, Cynthia, was that life was bringing me to this very first time when I would really fulfill my, uh, fulfill a really huge dream. And all of that trajectory was actually to bring me to that point. And it was as a, as, as an equestrian cabaret artist, because when I came to France 30 years ago, I, I I discovered that uh, that cabaret with horses was a whole culture, was a whole thing on the continent. I thought I'd landed in heaven, and I'm like, okay, this is it. I've arrived. Like my my life can start now. So I started training for that because this is what I'd been wanting to do for you know for the last twelve years, and gone all over the place. And and then suddenly here I was in this in this beautiful beautiful place where it was possible to learn how to do artistic things with horses so from from that dream that i never never left this was life's way of bringing me to this point and the most important thing in that is that one i i actually got to to doing it for a very short time as a professional during which time there was this beautiful moment on the Mediterranean, um, in an arena on the Mediterranean coast, on the Côte d'Azur, when I had to, my, me and my little white horse had to replace the, the, the head of the troop on the day of the show because she, uh, her horse was injured, and which was terrifying to me. You know, she, she, was, she was amazing and her horse was amazing and I was still training. And my horse performed to perfection and we were doing this incredible number we did two numbers we did this incredible number where because I taught him to dance with by body language with my body language there were no kind of you know circus whips or that sort of stuff and I was in a, I was in a white dress it was actually one of my ex husband's my my ex wedding's wedding dress oh. and it was exquisitely beautiful and at the end of it this trapezist um she came down from a tree and then um, Danny, the head of the troop, she opened a chest of doves. It sounds like a fairy tale, but it actually happened. <laughs> and it was life changing. She opened his chest and 12 white doves flew around the arena and they came and landed on my horse, Poliso. 
who did not move a muscle. And in that moment, I had what I can only describe as, I don't know, epiphany, kundalini awakening, whatever you want to call it. But I knew that I knew that for some reason, that whole very strange trajectory of bringing me to this moment of this fulfilling this, this deep heart and soul desire was really important. And, and I was like, okay, I'm done. Beam me up, Scotty. I'm good. Thanks. <laughs> this was great. <laughs> well, you know, and- this is so incredible because I got to tell you this. First of all, you know, when I saw equestrian cabaret, I was like, what is that? Because cabaret in our country is like you sing, you know, right? To do it with a horse is, is, is something. But, but, but I, something you said was very important to me. Everything led you to that moment. And I feel like that's what happens in our lives. If we really look at where we are in the moment, everything has led us to that moment. And so now you've opened this field and you can you can see the magic revealing itself in, in your work. I want I want to I want to know how you got from there to this incredible magazine and wanting to bring other people's light to the planet. Well, it was because because this feeling at the, in that moment was so powerful. And only just a few years earlier, when I'd become a mother for the second time at the age of at the age of 40, 41, um, I'd been pretty kind of su- pretty suicidal. I was very depressed. And in that moment, I thought I asked the universe, what is it that can take human beings from the depths of despair to feeling this much joy and expansion? Because if I can if I can know what that is, and I can replicate it, and I can teach it to other people, then I'm going to do something really great on this on this earth. And of course, I asked the universe and the universe said, watch out, girl, you're just like, <laughs> here, it, here it comes. And, and so, um, so I went on the path of personal development of all sorts of all sorts, and and then and then business, and then mixer two, and there was quite a few other adventures in there. But the fact the fact is that uh, again, by the most incredible synchro- synchronicities, in two thousand and seventeen, I I put my I had a ho- I had a hotel business. That was another episode. Um, I put it into dissolution voluntarily because I knew that that part was not part of this bigger picture. And I voluntarily went into um, personal bankruptcy. And the, the minute I did it, the universe said, yes, you're back on the right track. It showed me I was on the right track. It bought me, it just flooded me with opportunities, including the opportunity to be on a branding TV reality show in Florida. I, I, started, I started off in Florida, um, first of all, as a candidate, and then as an as an expert. And the the key thing that links it with the magazine there is that the work I was doing was very sweet and very lovely, but it was it was it was not world class, and it certainly wasn't. It didn't have those keys and those answers that I was looking for. So I went looking for them. And what I discovered, which is this is the Trinity Code. What I discovered was just absolutely blew my mind, which which really is the secret to manifestation, but so much, so much more that the, the you know the real keys to self fulfillment and self realization um, on Earth as as it is. So that now has become has become my life's work. And everything I do now is an expression of my life's work. So again, going back to what you said, Cynthia, that whole trajectory has brought me now to using that experience to asking a bigger question is what value can I give to the world with this? How can I serve with the wisdom that that I found? Um, And it looks like this magazine and this amazing platform, which is so exciting. (laughs) Well, you know, that's so beautiful. And and I just want to tell the women that are listening, you know, sometimes what looks like uh, a failure or an ending is actually a beginning. And that's exactly what you said. You knew something was telling you, dissolve this, 
go through this bankruptcy because there's something grander and greater waiting for you. And then I loved what you said. And then all these opportunities came. So tell us about the magazine. I mean, I'm so honored that I get to be in this magazine with you, but I want to know, tell us about the magazine and how you choose the women to be on the covers. So the magazine really is for change makers. And, and I, I include not just entrepreneurs in that because I feel that I feel that there are so many women all over the world who just know their part in in the great you know the, this great uplifting work that that we are called to do and how the how the feminine is being called to to take its place so whether the, whether they're in in business or or not is 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 not a thing but but women women if they if they are stirred to make a difference are are change makers so the magazine is for change makers and and I bring all of this as you mentioned that this the the new thoughts and the new sciences that we have now that have been so um, so shared by the great people like Greg Braden and and Bruce Lipton and Jody Spencer and those those awesome guys um, and all of that all of that knowledge now is freely available but how can we apply it to our lives our lifestyles and business um, you know to 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 allow us to ex- accelerate accelerate the great work we're doing you know it's the world is a big place since since we were in that gorgeous baby booming time you know there are there are quite a few other billion people on the planet so we have we have big work to do so i i make that um that that knowledge and that and that wisdom and that sharing available but with with great beauty and great grace and great high vibration and so the the women that i'm introduced to as you as you were introduced to me through through marsha martin are always the right fit always the right fit i don't just go out and look at a successful <laughs> you know a financially successful female influencer it doesn't interest me if she, if her if her if her soul is aligned with 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 my soul mission then it's it's always a perfect fit yes well i'm um i'm in awe of you and what you've done and the beauty and the grace in which you deliver the magazine and um but i want to ask you you know women like us who are visionaries and and who are who are also creative you know it's a trajectory dealing with relationships and and bearing children and balancing all of that. And I know that the women that are listening here are, are a lot of them are in the question, like, how do I balance this passion that wants to come through me with relationships and and stand still stand in my power? So what's been your journey there? There's, there's a couple there's a couple of things that there there that I realized in my you know we get we do get wiser as we go, as we get older thank goodness <laughs> we do get wiser um things might start to you know listen to gravity but we do get wiser so first of all I've realized that life will be me- life will be messy whatever it doesn't matter what you have in your bank account life will still be messy you know um we we have we have loved ones who who transition we have pets that transition uh we have pandemics we have wars there's it's 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 always been messy throughout the whole of history and it probably isn't going to change i'd like to think so but it probably isn't so if you can just like accept have a certain degree of acceptance of that's life's going to happen anyway but but my great work and my great expression of myself to the world is is more important and i will put my own oxygen mask on first that is one thing is just just not thinking that at any point that we're going to be protected by events and circumstances we we're not we still get sad we still get in a funk we still get bad days but but the great work when you when you're really connected to it will will carry you through. And the other thing is my beloved um, partner, my my final final partner, just so to say, as I've been married four times, um, is who is also a really wise and beautiful angel. He taught me the um, 
the equation of one and one makes three, which originally originated with Rumi, the poet, the Persian poet. And he talked about this third entity in a relationship, which he, they called, he called the beloved. And if in any relationship, whether it's couples or, you know, or colleagues or in a, even in a company, you have yourself, you have the other and you have this third um third entity which which is so lovely to call it the beloved so we use that as, as one and one makes three now what is the the beloved is has an interest it's not just me 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 or you 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 and and any power struggles in there but but what is what is in the interests of of the beloved of this third entity and if you can if you can keep that in mind when navigating ev everything, you know, just 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 e every day, um, it it just it gosh, it takes it takes away so much struggle. Yeah, that is so important. You know, um, I too have been married four times, and I, I see I kissed a lot of frogs, thinking they were going to be princes until the real person walked in. So I, I totally get that, but I but I think a, a part of of what is important about what you're sharing is, is that you, your whole person and your partner whole person came in and partnered with the beloved so that it became this beautiful thing. And, and, um, and your children, how, are, are they, have they captured that vision? Not at all. <laughs> no, not a chance. <laughs> I did my best and you know it's like well I'm here when you need me <laughs> just like no um my my eldest who is now 40 43 she's gonna be 43 this year um she she is kind of softening and coming around a little bit because she's now a mother of two demon toddlers so <laughs> she's <laughs> so so motherhood and parenting is really kind of giving her lots of questioning the young one for, for who's 24 for the moment not just not bothered and unfortunately she is in this latest screen dominated generation uh, screen dominated generation which and I just I pray for their souls so right. um so so you, to answer your question not quite <laughs> yeah but, but that's but that, but here's the thing that's what I think is important though is like they get to have their own journey. They get to have their own trajectory. Absolutely. But we get to model what possibility can look like and health can look like and grace can look like. So I, uh, you know, I mean, I have two boys and, you know, uh, I've watched their choices and gone, I you sure you want to do that. I, you know, and, and everything that's happening to them is going to bring them to their moments of awakening. So it, it, it's awesome. I want to know how people find you. How do people get all of your, you get your magazine and learn about your work? Well, it's really easy. Um, at, at my website, which is Jenny with an I, Jenny with an I dash P dot com um, forward stroke magazine. And you'll, you'll see the beautiful magazine on which you're going to be, your beautiful face is going to be on it very shortly. <laughs> um, so jenny-p.com forward slash magazine. And when you su sign up there, you will get the last issue. So the issue that's just out and also a preeminence blueprint, which is which is of the nine graces. So it's a little bit more about the work that's in the magazine and every and every magazine. It is free. It, it is it is always chock-a-block full of gorgeous wisdom so and if you want to talk to me I'm just it just google Jenny Parker Brown and, and, and find me and I'm just you know you can just find me but I'm on Facebook uh, you know I'm um I'm 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 willing I'm available and open I've got a Facebook group so uh anybody can find me, me by and, and it would be my joy to bring to come into the to the preeminence Jennyverse <laughs> I love that. Well, I ask the same last question of every guest. This show is called Women Awakening. What do you think is the one thing, the most important thing about women awakening on the planet at this moment? I think a lot of women have had their 
their dreams tampered down. It seems to me that um, that we are now in we, we are the, we kind of seem to be in it in this whole coping coping paradigm, wh- whereby I want uh, my my work is to really remind people that you are an inf- infinite creator, and you can still do be and have any anything you want whatever's going on in the world so dream though even the word dreams has gone out of fashion a little bit it's very much it's very much linked to material possessions whereby if you know that I think that's what my life's work is about is to remind people that you know to 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 dream and dream big and go after it and start wherever what wherever you are just start yes yes just start Well, Jenny, thank you so much for being here and bringing your wisdom and your enthusiasm and your creativity. It's an honor to walk this path with you. And and ladies, I hope you will investigate her and look for her magazine. It really is exquisite and filled with so many gifts for you. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you so much for allowing me to share this this message thank you and i look forward to meeting all all of you ladies out there <laughs> all right ladies so um i i want you to know you can go to cynthiajames.net if you need support or you want to be in my monthly newsletter or find out what i'm doing around the world but i'm going to close with the same thing i say to you in different form every week this is your time this is the time on the planet when you have been put here for a divine reason. You are an unrepeatable spark of the divine. And so therefore you have come here to do something nobody else can do. And yes, it can be scary. And yes, you can question. And yes, you can have doubt. But just start. That's what Jenny just told us. Just start. Move in the direction of your dreams and watch what happens. Grateful to see you. I'll see you next week. 